This is the final video in our IFR Sim Challenge series. Our full IFR flight from Waukesha, Wisconsin to Eau Claire, Chippewa Valley is available on the Flight Insight website at the link here or in the description. We've shot the ILS approach into runway 22 down to minimums and arriving at the decision altitude haven't seen the runway. So we're gonna go mist. Use the memory aid, cram, climb, clean, cool, call. Cram the throttle, not too hard though. Climb the aircraft, establishing a positive rate of climb. When we're a good altitude and climbing, clean the flaps. Cool would be turning off car heat or opening cowl flaps if they were equipped here. And finally, call. Once we're comfortable with our mist procedure, which is climbing straight ahead to 1,600 and then continuing the climb in a right turn, let Tower know we've gone around. Tower Cessna 8 Foxtrot Tango is going mist. November 8 Foxtrot Tango, fly the published mist and contact Minneapolis Center on 125.3. Fly published mist and contact Center 8 Foxtrot Tango. We'll switch back over to Center. Minneapolis Center Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango is mist approach 1,500, climbing 3,500 on the published mist. November 518 Foxtrot Tango, ident. After the ident, the controller will spot us on the scope. November 8 Foxtrot Tango, radar contact two miles south of Eau Claire, say intentions. The controller wants to know what we want to do. Do we want to hold, get vectors for another approach at Eau Claire, or divert? The weather clearly isn't conducive to trying again here, so we'll want to go to our filed alternate. Cessna 8 Foxtrot Tango would like to divert to our planned alternate at South St. Paul. Cessna 8 Foxtrot Tango, Roger cleared to South St. Paul Airport via radar vectors. When able, turn left, direct South St. Paul, maintain 4000. Direct South St. Paul, maintain 4000, 8 Foxtrot Tango. So ATC has cleared us to our alternate and told us, when able, to turn direct to South St. Paul. This gives us some leeway to get ourselves set up, take a breather, and figure out our next moves. For now, just fly the airplane and continue along the published mist. For the GPS, we'll just hit the D button and key in South St. Paul, KSGS, and hit enter twice. The new desired track is 270, so we'll start a left turn towards that now and twist the OBS to the new course. We're also going to stay in our climb up to 4000. So this is quite a hectic sequence of events. First, there's the going mist involving starting a climb and flying the first parts of the mist procedure. Then there's the radio calls, first to tower, then with approach. Once we're settled, we coordinate our diversion and set up our navigation. The aviate, navigate, communicate progression is never more important to follow than when on the mist approach. So we're on our way to our diversion airport, South St. Paul, and we check the weather. The AWOS was set up in COM2 active. Here's what that looks like. The ceiling is still a bit low, but we should be able to get below it to the decision altitude on the LPV minimums for the RNAV 34, only about 300 feet above the runway threshold. We're going to be requesting that approach, starting from the press fix, so we get our handoff. November 8 Foxtrot Tango, contact Minneapolis approach 121.6. 121.6, say Foxtrot Tango. Minneapolis approach, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango 4000, with the weather at South St. Paul, request RNAV 34 from press. November 518 Foxtrot Tango, Minneapolis approach, you can expect that, the South St. Paul altimeter 299 or 2. So we've been assigned our desired approach. Let's load it up on the GPS. We'll hit PROC, choose the RNAV 34, select PRESS as the transition, and we'll load it for now. Let's look at the plate and brief this approach. We already got our weather and we're speaking with Minneapolis approach. The frequency listed on the plate is 121.2, but we're on 121.6. That can happen with busy facilities like this, but maybe we'll be handed off one more time to that listed frequency. We can set our CTAF on standby 122.7. We're going to be navigating to press and then flying inbound to Zikpo at 3000 feet. We don't do the procedure turn as it says in the leg there. We turn inbound on the approach course of 342, descend to 2,400 feet, the glide slope intercept altitude. We're WAS enabled, so we'll fly down to the decision altitude of 1,102 feet. If we go missed, it's a straight out climb to 1,400, then a climbing right turn up to 3,000 direct to Zikpo. When we land, we'll exit the runway to the right and taxi to the FBO. Eventually, we'll hear our turn instruction from ATC. November 8 Foxtrot Tango, turn left direct press. Direct press, 8 Foxtrot Tango. Because we loaded the approach with the press transition, this will automatically navigate us toward press, a desired track of 254. 
As we get closer to press, ATC will ask us how we're going to cancel our IFR flight plan. November 8, Foxtrot Tango report IFR cancellation in the air with me or on the ground via flight service. Roger, we'll cancel on the ground, 8 Foxtrot Tango. South St. Paul is a non-towered airport. We'll need to cancel our IFR, which we can either do in the air, but not until we're in visual conditions, or on the ground after we land. Given the weather, we'll stay on IFR until we land. Next comes our approach clearance. November 8, Foxtrot Tango, five miles from press, cross press at 3000, cleared RNAV 34 approach, and report established inbound on the final approach course. Press at 3000, cleared RNAV 34, will report established on the final approach course, 8 Foxtrot Tango. ATC wants a heads up from us when we're inbound, which is when they plan to let us switch over to the CTAF. So we pass over press, turn towards Zikpo, and after that, turn inbound on the approach course. The approach Cessna 8 Foxtrot Tango is inbound at Zikpo. November 8, Foxtrot Tango, radar services terminated. Change to advisory frequency is approved. Switching to CTAF, 8 Foxtrot Tango. Radar services are terminated, but we're still IFR, so don't squawk VFR yet. If we need to go missed, ATC will need to be able to radar identify us. From here, we continue down on the approach. We'll make the necessary calls on CTAF as we come in. The weather is reported higher, so hopefully we can break out before the decision altitude. And as we descend down, the clouds break and we see the runway, so we can make a landing there, exiting the runway to the right. Thus ends a successful diversion. We may be in another state than the one we intended to land at, but at least we're on the ground to assess options. Check out the full IFR flight and all its videos at the Flight Insight website linked here in the description, and we'll see you later on for another IFR Sim Challenge.